raise your hand if you haven't been snowshoeing before. You can learn science in the classroom, but really where it's gonna stick to you is like when you go on Saturdays and Sundays with your family, and you go check out the bark of a tree or you see an American robin eating a worm. I found something! That's how it's gonna stay with you forever. Oh, there's a lot on that one. How many different caddisflies do you have? Like a lobster crab. So it made this. It made this. Yeah, that is so cool. I didn't feel outdoorsy as a child growing up around hundreds of trees because that area was a work area. And so we didn't see it as a recreation. If we want this land to be conserved and, and stay recreational, we need to make sure that everyone is educated and not just wealthy white families. This is public land. Mm -hmm. And the public land is for everybody to enjoy. So Tima Tralesa decided to come to this area because it had a high percentage of Hispanic, Latinx people. For two years, the Environment for the Americas and the National Science Foundation did surveys and they found that people weren't really using the trails or going into the national forest or exploring outdoors. And they looked at the science test scores for K through 12 and fifth grade test scores were very low. So definitely the informal environmental education portion was not there. Yeah, we need to really get down to the root of the problem, which is education, access to jobs. Like if we don't educate our current Latinx youth right now so that they can you know, later on get better jobs so that they can go out on the weekends and learn about nature and then you know, say, nature's beautiful, I want to take care of it. Traditionally, a lot of these outdoor recreation areas have been geared towards English-speaking people. When the Forest Service started back in the early 1900s, there was no, let's make this kiosk sign in Spanish and get our Spanish-speaking population in the forest. Like, that was never the intention. Now they're trying to do it, and I give them kudos. Like, thank you for trying to create like more inclusionary uh, programs and yeah. events, mm -hmm. but there was over 100 years of not necessarily excluding people, but not... Not including. Not, not necessarily including. General invitations don't work for Latinx communities. It's just that culture where like you don't show up anywhere unless you're invited. And so you really have to get that personal invitation like, hey, Elisa, come hiking with us. Or hey, Elisa, come to this workshop about beavers. So when we see caddis locations in rivers, it's a clue that tells us that that's a really healthy river. <laughs> if you go into any park or a national forest and you see a, either a park ranger or a wilderness ranger, mm -hmm. they're in their full getup. Mm -hmm. You got your Forest Service badge or your park badge. It can be a little unnerving. The less time you spend in the national lands, whether it be a park or a forest, the less you know, like, oh, this is actually someone that has nothing to do with uh, whether it be ICE or Border mm -hmm. Patrol. I grew up with a lot of the other immigrant kids and agricultural families. I had a ton of green space, beautiful views. I just didn't know how to appreciate it. I didn't have anyone to talk to about it. I hop on Latino Outdoors or I hop on these Audubon societies and I see hundreds of people like us, yeah. our age, who speak Spanish or Latino and have this environmental background, but they're not in places like Wenatchee. People who get their degree in environmental education who are of a diverse background, they don't stay in their rural towns. People like us just flock to where like the big national parks are, where there's big cities nearby too. But we need to stay in these places that really need it the most. Yeah. The Latinx Hispanic community here has not been targeted to do outdoor recreation sports, even just hiking or um, learning about nature outside of school. My first language was Spanish, but I never once heard my parents or siblings or cousins, nobody talked about tree bark or nobody talked about, you know, the little pieces on the branch where the, where the flowers come out or anything like that. I'm Leavenworth, but I'm not sure if this would be a black hawthorn or another species of hawthorn. We're having to learn science Spanish and then teach it to the community. Los pinos son coníferos, uh -huh. los son caducos. Caducos. So when we're educating, we're telling people, you know, this is la corteza del árbol, you know, this is the bark of the tree and the bark of this tree protects this tree from fire. 
this area is 40% Hispanic, Latinx. Hopefully one day we'll see that exact 40% on the trails, you know, buying passes to go into the national forest. So that one day, you know, there's no need for Team Atorlesa to take people out. Like they're already seeing themselves, they're feeling comfortable going by themselves. So that's, that's our hope is to one day not have to exist. This series is made possible by the generous support of the Port of Seattle.